Hi everyone! Welcome back to my channel or welcome if you're new. My name is Jenny and I'm here today to bring you a video, the second in my um, Women Artist series. This video is inspired by a desire to raise the profile of women visual artists on YouTube and in general. My, in my first video, I shared the work of three artists I call the Big Three. The most famous women artists in North America, Emily Carr, Georgia O'Keeffe, and Frida Kahlo. In case you haven't seen that video yet, I will link it below. Women have never been treated equally in the art world, and today they remain dramatically underrepresented and undervalued in museums, galleries, and action houses. As you can imagine, this issue is compounded when talking about women and men of color, different abilities, and gender or sexual identities. With each video in this series, I plan to highlight an organization along with the artists that is working towards changing these inequities. Today, I'd like to share the work of Art Girl Rising. Liesl Strauss, founder and creative director of Art Girl Rising, is originally from South Africa. She works to raise awareness and provide a voice for female and non-binary artists to achieve equal representation in museums, galleries, and auction houses. Art Girl Rising creates t-shirts like the one I'm wearing and facilitates projects like galleries, database directories, and more. I've linked their information below if you'd like to learn more about them. Today, I've chosen three artists from Kenya to share. Their work is vastly different and they by no means represent the totality of the women artists' work from Kenya, but I hope they will be names that stick with you and make you curious to find out more about them and other Kenyan artists. Rosemary Karuga was born in June 1928 in Maru, Kenya, to a Ugandan father and a Kenyan mother. Rosemary was the first female graduate of the Margaret Trowell School of Industrial and Fine Arts, Makere University in Kampala, Uganda in the 1950s. After studying design, painting, and sculpture, Karuga went on to become an art educator in rural Kenya, where she married and raised three children. She continued to teach and retired in 1989. At this point, at 60 years old, she pursued being a full-time artist and was artist-in-residence at Nairobi's Payapa Arts Center. Rosemary Karuga became a highly esteemed and respected artist in the Kenyan art scene with an increasing international reputation. She had her international breakthrough in 1990 with a group exhibition in this, at the Studio Museum in Harlem, New York. Other international exhibitions followed in quick succession. Karuga's collage works were created with colored paper scraps from newspapers, glossy magazines, and packaging material. Inspired by the Byzantine mosaics, her colorful paper collages of people, animals, and landscapes reflected her direct environment in figurative representational art. Her story is inspiring because it highlights that despite putting an art career on hold for a time, you can still pursue it later on in life. Rosemary Karuga died in 2021 in Ireland, where she was living near her daughter at the age of 93. Wangechi Mutu was born in Nairobi in 1972 and was educated in Great Britain and the United States. She earned a BFA from Cooper Union College in New York in 1996 and an MFA from Yale University in 2000. I became fascinated by Mutu's work after watching an Art 21 extended play video about her, including her magnificent Nairobi studio. I'll link this video below. Mutu is currently represented by galleries in New York, Los Angeles, and London. Her work has been exhibited at many institutions. In 2019, her sculptures, The New Ones Will Free Us, were on display outside the Metropolitan Museum of Art in New York. Her work conflates gender, race, art history, and personal identity. Creating complex collages, videos, sculptures, and performances, Mutu's work features recurring mysterious leitmotifs such as masked women and snake-like tendrils. Speaking about how she assembles her sculptures, Mutu says, quote, I try to put these objects together in the form of characters, in the form of these spirits that can speak of a place and a time that is probably in the future when we are able to live in harmony with one another, in harmony with the land, and in harmony with what literally has created us. I think it has something to do with Kenya being one of the areas where humans first became human, unquote. I also found Beatrice's work on YouTube. Beatrice Wanjiku was born in the Nagong Hills area of Kenya in 1978. After attending local primary and secondary schools, she was admitted to the Buruburu Institute of Fine Arts in Buruburu, a neighborhood of Nairobi, the capital city of Kenya. 
In 2002, she graduated with a diploma in fine art. She is now a rising star in the Kenyan art scene. In 2017, she was part of the exhibition Personal Structures Open Borders, organized by the European Cultural Center during the 57th Venice Biennale. Her works have been exhibited nationally and internationally. She is a painter exploring and interrogating themes about the shifting nature of human beings and our inherent ability to transform. Her works offer an insight into the eternal quest to understand our realities. She says, quote, My paintings are about hope, a mirror of who we are or who we aspire to be. They are an excavation of the soul to better understand ourselves and the spaces we occupy, unquote. I love the haunting aspect of her work and how deep and translucent her paintings are with her rich and dark color palette. I have only scratched the surface of these three incredible artists in this video. If you'd like to explore more about them in the description box below, you can find articles and video links where you can learn more. Thanks for watching and subscribe for more women artist content to come.